Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to remove the background from a photo so that you can use it in a card or in a thumbnail image like I have right here. Very easy to do. First, I'm just going to remove all these excess layers in here. Let's just delete that and get rid of that. That's my YouTube thumbnail template right there. We'll be coming back to that. But let's go over here to the photo bin, and I'll bring up this picture right here. And this is the one we're going to be taking the background out of. Now, if you don't have floating windows like this, just go up to Edit, come down here to Preferences and General. And right here, just make sure that this checkbox right there is checked, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode, and you're all set. Okay, I'm just going to dock this one up here. And we'll do this real easy. Go up to Select, and we'll use the new Subject Select. It does a very good job of this. Usually, it tends to be a little bit sloppy on hair. You may get a little bit of your lost hair on the edges. So let's fix that next. Take any of your selection tools. I'll just grab the marquee tool here. It doesn't matter which one you select. Any of those three is fine. Come down here, click on Refine Edge. And I'll set up Smart Radius and set this at one pixel just to help just a little bit, not much. And then you can see right over here, that is the size of my selection brush. Right now it's set at 70, which is good for this picture. You may need to change your size down here depending upon the size of your original picture. And I'll just use the refined edge just along the edge of the hair. Everything else is great. So I'll do it just along in here. And just take your time and do it in little short strokes like I'm doing here. And then allow Photoshop almost to go in and do its magic in between those short strokes. And this seems to get the best results out of it. Okay, once that's done, then come down here and change your output to new layer with layer mask and choose OK. Then gives you new layer on top with your transparent background. There we go. That's already done for us. And we're also to go, except I like to clean things up just a little bit. Go over here to the layer mask side. Now this is a little glitch I've seen recently. And I've seen it more recently since I switched over to Windows 11. Is that the layer mask right now should be white and black. You should have black where you're not seeing anything and then white where you're seeing the subject in there. Sometimes it comes in looking transparent. So just imagine that that's black or white. I have found a way to solve that. Simply close and then reopen the file and that will then show correctly. Let me just do that really quickly here. I'm going to save this out as a new file name. File, do a save as and I'll just save it as the Photoshop format. And then we'll close that. Then I'll reopen that file. Open recent file. It's right on top. And there we go. Now that layer mask looks correct. So if you're seeing the transparency over here on the right hand side, just close it and reopen it and you should be okay. And the reason why I want to have the layer mask showing correctly is I want to clean this up. Click on the layer mask side, look for that light blue outline. So you're on that side. And then we're going to be using this tool here. This is the burn tool. It's right down there. And find a good brush size for that. That's a pretty good brush size right here. And this is just going to make the edge more contrasty. And we can use this to clean up some of the spots where it gets a little foggy around the edge of your layer mask. And it's not much, just a few spots can use this. Most of this looks just fine. Most along the top of the hair right there. And that's good. That's now cleaned up. Okay, now here's where having these floating layers comes in very handy. I'm going to take this tab up here, pull it down, float that layer. And behind you can see my thumbnail image back there. I'm just going to grab this layer up here and drag it right down onto that file and transfer that over. I can then just get this out of the way. At this point, I can choose what size I want. You can move them around, choose the size or position, and then way out here, you have the control handles for the whole picture. I'm going to grab the upper left-hand corner and just drag that in, and I can use that to adjust the size until I get them just the size that I want. And I think somewhere around like this looks pretty good. Right there. I like that and then click OK on that one. Now come down to the bottom layer, and again, notice over here, I have this transparency showing on the right-hand side, so I'm not seeing what's in those layers. So let's just save this file, file save, and that's where it should be, and then let's close that down and reopen it, get him out of the way, and there we go. And notice now it's showing correctly over here on the right-hand side. So again, this is a glitch I've seen pop up recently, but it's pretty easy to fix. Just close and reopen. And it's a little weird on his hair right up in here. I can fix that easily enough. Just go to the layer mask side again. This time grab a paintbrush and let's find a nice small size brush. Not too small. Maybe about 20 that looks good. And I'm going to paint black right on the layer mask. And black is going to hide the stuff I don't want. And I'll just come in here and just do just a little bit of that tweaking right in there. And just clean up that edge right at the top of the hair. Okay, there we go. 
Now we actually have a transparent background. If I hide him, you can see there's the white background in behind. It's our standard background right here. And then here's the photo. Now what I normally do with my thumbnails is either to put a picture back here taken from the project I'm working on, or maybe a screenshot of that project, or you can use different photos in behind there. Anything you want, just put it in behind his image, which is above this layer here. And for that, I have one over here in the photo bin, and this is cloud picture right there. Again, floating windows makes this very easy. Just grab the background, drag it over here, and close that down, and there's our clouds in behind. You can put them where they look nice. And I think right about here, I want to have a text on top, so I don't have this too busy. If I had this bit here, this becomes a real focal point, and your eyes want to take a look at that one little cloud. So I don't want to have anything really grabbing all of your attention. So I'll put it right about here. So it's cloudy, but it's not really grabbing my attention back in there. Now I may want to adjust his position, which we can do just by going back up here to that layer, and then you can drag him around and get him just where you want him to. Okay, now on the text, I'll come down here to the cloud layer, and let's set our text at black. Just hit the button right here to default foreground background colors. Go up to the type tool right here. And I picked a very heavy typeface, kind of a thick black typeface like that. These work better in thumbnails. Also, your heavier typefaces work out very well for cards as well. It's just easier to read at a quick glance. It's called headline text. And I have a large size 144, which I've already tried here. Now let's click into here someplace. There we go. And I'll type in the beginning of my headline and then position my text basically where I want it. Now in this case, I have this right justify. So I'll grab my type tool and click right after the H right here. And down here is right justify, which means it's gonna be lining up on the right hand side. So put in the rest of my title. There it is. And I'll position that just about here. And right here is where you wanna make a decision on where you wanna have the type interacting with your subject. It can go in behind like I have right here. It can go in front, or we can adjust the subject to clear that up. I'm just going to move my subject over here a little bit. Just go to the left, just like that. There we go. Notice how we've lost those thumbnail images up here, right-hand side again. Annoying little glitch. Hopefully they'll fix that in the next version. Let's now put some effects on this type, make it look a bit better. And right now is a good time to shrink down your image down to thumbnail size if you're doing this for a thumbnail. So grab the zoom tool and then just shrink that down so it's pretty small, kind of thumbnail size. It gives you a better idea of how things are actually gonna be working when they're on YouTube. So I wanna have a bit more punch on the type. And for that, let's go up here to the layer menu and layer style, style settings. And then right here, let's do a stroke on this. I'll change the stroke to white. Just click in the middle here and drag over left hand corner. That's white. Set the position to outside and opacity at 100. And then just pull the slider up until you begin to get that outline. And that really helps get that text popping out of that background. Now, things to watch when doing outlines are things like right inside the C, right here. You have two choices in there. Either have a little bit of opening showing like this, but sometimes it gets a bit too busy, or pull it up just until that closes down. And that's right there, so it's all white in that area. Okay, that looks good. The basic positioning all looks fine. I'm going to bring this back up here to fit on screen. And the last thing I want to do is I want to adjust the contrast of my image. He's looking a little bit washed out now just because we can compare his colors with the pure black and white over here. So he needs to go a bit more contrasty to work with this text. So let's go back up here to our subject layer and we'll go up to a layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and this time levels right here, where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. This will now act just on his image. It's going to darken down the shadows and it's gonna increase the contrast on the left-hand side. The middle control adjusts the overall values. I can brighten them up a bit here. And then the right side is going to increase the brightness of the lights. I think they're okay, just a little bit maybe like that. Doesn't need very much. A little more darks and I think that's better. So he's just a bit more punchy in there, a bit darker, a bit more contrasting. That really helps to work him in better with the text that I have and go right about there. I think that's pretty nice. Okay, last thing I'll do on this is again to back out and double check at that smaller size and that looks real nice. Now, sometimes you'll be seeing little lines around here, around the image, and you may want to go to your bottom layer just so you don't see any of those outlines happening. If you don't want to see these control handles, go up here to select and come down to deselect layers. And there you go, the control handles are gone. Nice clean view of that. Okay, bring them back up to full size, hit screen. And if you like this video, hit that like button and I'll see you next time.